Hello and welcome to the C++ and Science YouTube channel, where I will teach you various topics around C++. I'm your host, Andreas Fertig, a trainer and consultant for C++. Have you ever wondered how default parameters work in C++? Here I have an example. I have the function fun here, which takes an int i as a parameter, and I default it to 43. What that means, I think you all know, is I can now call fun with an arbitrary integer, in my case 45, and the code works, but I can also call fun without a parameter, and the code still compiles, i becomes 43 in this case. The compiler makes this work the following, so it simply says, okay, there is no default parameter. The compiler takes all the defaults we provide and inserts them in the places where we omitted this default parameter. So my call to fun here in line number 9 ends up being a call to fun with the number 43, while on the left here I didn't provide a value. So this is how default parameters work. In every place we do not provide them, the compiler uses the value and fills them in. And with that everything is equal to if we would call it with a parameter. Now there is one case where default parameters will often cause trouble. Have a look at the following code. So what I have here is a class car that comes with a virtual default destructor and a member function drive which is pure virtual in this case. It takes a single parameter edirect, my direction enum here and it can tell the car to drive forward, left, right and backwards and I decided to make backwards the default. Whether that's a real smart decision, a different question, but this is my default parameter here. Now then I derive from car and create myself a specific car, a Tesla. The Tesla overrides the virtual member function drive and implements it here by printing out something and it also decides that well, backwards was a bad idea as a default, so Tesla drives forward by default. So this is what my default parameter here does. In main here, I use a unique pointer of car, call that one generic, and I create, via make unique, a new Tesla object and assign it to car. So here I'm creating a unique pointer of type Tesla, which I can assign to a unique pointer of type car due to their inheritance relationship. And now in line 20 I'm calling drive on that generic unique pointer, so basically on a car pointer. The question to you now is in which direction does the car drive? And this is not as so often where you want it to drive, but what is really happening in your code here. So with the knowledge we gained earlier, we know that once we omit a parameter and have a default parameter, the compiler inserts it in that place. So the question is, is it really the desired Tesla or is it the one from the base class? And the way things work here is the compiler only sees that we have a unique pointer of type car. So it goes to the implementation of car their drive and looks up the default parameter there. C++ Insights proves that. If you look at the output here, at the transformation, then we can see, yes, indeed, our car here drives still backward, despite the fact that we created a specific Tesla object, which aims to drive in a different direction. This is why your default parameters on virtual member functions more or less never work the way you intend them to. You can also see this in Compiler Explorer. I provided specific values for the enumerators here to make it very clear at which enum we are looking at. We execute the code as before and we can see the output from a Tesla here is 3. That means it drives still backwards despite the fact that actually the Tesla's drive function is invoked. The default comes from the base class. So I hope this helps you to understand this scenario, avoid it in the future and continue writing safe and robust code. 
That's it for today. Thanks for watching.